Hello and welcome to this video. This is our chapter on the Dutch defense. Yeah, the Dutch defense happens after d4, f5. f5 is a very ambitious move by Black. It's um, yeah, oftentimes played by players who want a non-symmetrical position right away, and this is definitely what they get. However, f5 also has some drawbacks. It is a weakening move. The king side is severely weakened. And this is also why the Dutch defense is sometimes viewed as a little bit suspicious by many strong players or theoreticians. Still, it's very important to be uh, equipped with some ideas because, as mentioned, it is ambitious and usually complicated. Now, what to do against the Dutch? Um, the Dutch defense basically has one mainline approach that White can try against, or White can play some... Um, yeah, more offbeat lines on the second move. Some of those are actually quite interesting. For example, I have played the move knight c3 here, or there is bishop to g5. Those moves are all very well um, respected lines. There is, however, a move order issue. The Dutch, most of the time, rises via d4 f5, but that is not a given. Um, some black players are cunning with their move order. They start with another a different first move and only then transpose to the Dutch. That can happen, for example, after d4 e6, after which we go knight f3 according to our repertoire concept, and then they could play f5, and then your knight c3 ideas mm, are a little bit out of the picture. At least they don't make that much sense anymore. The same goes for moves orders like this, d6, knight f3, g6, g3, we are expecting a king's Indian to happen, and then all of a sudden they play f5, or they let us wait another move, and then they play f5. So there are actually many ways, you can even um, look at like this, yeah, like knight f3, e6, g3, f5, and all of a sudden it is a Dutch. I know those move orders are not as frequently seen as d4, f5, for people who want to go for the Dutch, but it's possible. And the problem is, if you learn some specific line to this move order, like this, for example, as mentioned, um, it's not all you need to know. You also need to be aware that they can do stuff like this, and then you are in a kingside fianchetto set up against the Dutch. So, as mentioned, the kingside fianchetto is the absolute main line against the Dutch anyway. So, the most frequently played move and the move usually recommended by theoreticians is the move g3 in this position or knight f3 and then g3. And this is our general repertoire approach anyway. So um, I decided to simply um, cover the main lines against the Dutch and um, stick to our usual kingside fianchetto setup. The reasoning why g3, bishop g2, a kingside fianchetto is a good setup against the Dutch is that the bishop on g2, as if we put up some more moves like this, for example, the bishop on g2 is having some currently indirect influence over the e4 square. And white, as a general plan, wants to play e4 at some point, open up the central position and often expose weaknesses that black has created. It will not, um, yeah, black will not just play e6 or g6, but play other pawn moves. And usually on the e-file, there's something that we can play for. So e4 is a standard break that white wants to um, apply in the Dutch. Um, in the Dutch defense, black has three main setups that we will cover and some oddities. I will start with the oddities, but later we will also look at the classical Dutch. The classical Dutch is a combination of the moves e6 and d6, like c4, d6 would be the classical Dutch. Um, Black also plays the so-called stone wall with d5, setting up this pawn center. Here it's, um, yeah, here e5, the weak square is a main theme. We will go, um, I will talk about the main ideas when we look about uh, look at the um, specific variations. Um, and the third main line is G6, the Leningrad Dutch. 
which is probably nowadays um, the most frequently seen line and also the one with, with the best theoretical reputation. Now, we need to um, look at some odd lines though. Um, we will go with knight f3 on the second move. You can also go g3, it doesn't really make a huge difference. In some cases, after uh, two g3, there are options to later use the knight on a different square than f3, but this is not very relevant for us because we will have many move orders like, as mentioned, this, where we have committed the knight anyway to f3. So um, let's have a look at some of the odd lines. We go knight f3, and now black, um, in the absolute majority of times, plays knight to f6, and um, then decides on a pawn set up in the center. He can also play a pawn move now, like d6, e6, g6, one of those, and they are usually transpositional. Um, we will talk about g6 a little bit later when we look at the Leningrad formation because this is a clear relative to that. But I can also go d6 here and then later transpose again to a Leningrad or to a classical Dutch with e6 and d6. This is all very flexible in move order, but we do the same, we play the same moves every time. Um, <clears throat> he can also play e6 and now decide on a setup, for example, he could go b6 and we reach something like that, that we will examine actually in, in a minute, via um, um, the more common move order of knight f6. This is um, the best square for the knight anyway, it makes a lot of sense to control e4. So we go g3, and now the big parting of the ways here, g6 is the Leningrad, e6 is the classical or stonewall most of the time. Um, black has some really rare lines available. Let's have a look at one, um, d6, bishop g2, and now the very uncommon move c6. It's um, um, an offbeat idea, black, I, black wants to play queen c7 and e5. All right, so we castle as usual, black goes queen to c7, trying to prepare e5. The drawback is that this is a very slow approach and black moves the queen um, very early on. Here, um, I recommend to play a little bit differently than we usually do. c4, e5 is not bad for white, but it makes sense here to go for very quick e4. Just play the knight to c3 and prepare e4 quickly. Um, a real attractive point about this move is that Black's um, planned move, he wants to go e5 clearly, um, is actually not good. Yeah, We will have a look at this in a second. Um, Black probably should not go e5, but rather play a move like g6, after which I recommend to play rook e1 and prepare e4. Now, this is excellent for white. Yeah, we see that we are much better developed and we'll open up the center with e4 quickly. And d5 is extremely ugly, giving us um, yeah, more tempi, even it looks pretty awful. So rook e1 is a good move. Um, I need to mention that I had this on the board once, actually, a long time ago, and I played uh, the extremely aggressive move e4 because, I mean, I felt like I should have to punish this, what black is doing. Um, but e4 is not as as good as rook e1. It's possible. It's not a terrible move, but it's a bit over-aggressive, and rook e1 is just strong. Now, if black goes e5, which is the most likely case, given that he has started with that, we can capture on e5 and now play the move e4. This is a very typical counterpunch in the Dutch defense. Whenever black tries to set up this pawn duo e5 and f5, and we will see this idea later in the classical Dutch and in the Leningrad, we want to be ready to either prevent this completely, or if we have to allow it, then we want to be ab absolutely ready to fight it with an e4 counterpunch, preventing black from advancing the pawn even further. Here, uh, black is in actually quite terrible shape. Um, if he now tries to uh, support the center with bishop 2d6, we have a very strong move available. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is not the only one, but this is very strong, bishop h3. It's a bit uncommon, but it's very strong in a tactical way. We attack f5, and black probably has to capture. I don't really see what else he can do. 
Um, and then we can take on c8, initiating an interesting tactical sequence. Now the queen has to cover this, so black will have to take here. And now we have bishop takes b7, and black is already busted, basically. Has to take queen d6, and black's position is already falling apart. Yeah, know that he has... Thank you.